I have the keys to a 2008 911 Targa 4 in Nordic Gold Metallic and the keys to a 2012 911 Targa 4 in Dark Blue Metallic. I'm driving both of these cars and giving you my impressions. Be sure to log into your YouTube account, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. The 997 generation has come to signify for many people what the 996 could and should have been from a design standpoint. The 997's large, round headlights and sculpted fenders contributed to a modern look with a clear link to the 911's air-cooled past. The Targa was originally Porsche's solution for a Cabriolet 911 that adhered to stricter safety regulations that the company thought a fully open car would not be able to meet. The stainless or black Targa bar with the removable center roof section would be a hallmark of the 911 Targa through 1994. The 1996 model year introduction of the 993 Targa brought with it a new interpretation of the Targa roof. Gone was the removable panel and thin roof rails were added to allow a large glass panel to slide all the way open. The rear window became a little hatch. This design continued through the 997 generation, like this 2008 Targa 4 and this 2012 Targa 4 that we'll be driving. The roof system made the Targa 4 models quite heavy at 3,350 to 3,450 pounds, depending on year and transmission choice. But the weight penalty is comparable to that of a Cabriolet's versus a coupe. The 2008 here has a 6-speed manual, while the 2012 has a 7-speed PDK dual-clutch automatic. A 997.1 Targa 4 is one of the great modern Porsches that is still somewhat affordable. Some 997.1 Targa 4 S's have brushed up against $90,000 on Bring a Trailer, and one sold for as low as $39,000 in 2020. But you can probably purchase a nice 3.6 liter 2008 Targa 4 in the $50,000 to $70,000 range. You'll pay more or less depending on condition and, in this case, the beautiful Nordic Gold color. If you're watching this in 2028, I bet you can still find nice 997.1 Targa 4s for less than $100,000. A 997.2 is rarer than the earlier 997.1s, ostensibly because the recession resulted in fewer buyers of Porsches. The Targa 4 was even rarer than the Targa 4S in the 997.2 generation, says the owner of these cars. The dark blue metallic of this example isn't nearly as bright as Nordic Gold, but it is different from the dealer order white, silver, black, and gray. A nice 997.2 Targa 4 in 2023 is in the $50,000 to $80,000 range depending on options, condition, and color. You'll almost always pay more for a 997.2 generation Targa 4 than a comparable 997.1. The spec of this Nordic Gold 2008 Targa 4 is even more impressive. The fact that it's Nordic Gold before it became a standard color option in 2009 meant the original owner had it sprayed paint a sample. 19 inch Carrera S wheels with painted crest center caps, Sport Chrono Package Plus, navigation and Bose surround sound, the list goes on. Perhaps more impressive than the Nordic Gold exterior is a combination of the Coco Special Leather that covers everything in the interior, the hugely expensive option to paint the center console and PCM unit in Nordic Gold, and the aluminum look, not silver, trim that adorns the multifunction steering wheel, door latches, armrests, and more. The leather adaptive sport seats are amazingly comfortable and supportive for people of various builds and sizes. Everything about this car is over the top and luxurious, and it's felt as much as seen while sitting behind the wheel. To my delight, the six-speed manual has the factory optioned short shifter. In 2009, Porsche introduced a more durable engine and a new automatic transmission, the dual-clutch PDK. Though many enthusiasts prefer the six-speed manual from this era, PDK is quick-shifting and preferable to the earlier torque converter automatic transmission of the Dot one It even unlocks more performance than the manual, with a slightly quicker 4.8 seconds 0-60 to 60 time compared to 5 with the manual, or 5.1, compared to our manual 2008 Targa 4 test car. Though I'm personally not a huge fan of this stone gray color of this interior, it is deceptively well optioned. Heated front seats, rear park assist, 
extended navigation module, Bose surround sound system, Sirius XM tuner, 12-way power seats, comfort and infotainment packages. Out the door in 2012, this dark blue metallic Targa 4 cost $106,050, including the $950 destination fee. Not cheap. All right, we are in a 2008 911 Targa 4 in the rare color of Nordic Gold Metallic. Uh, the 997.1 had a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated flat six. Uh, it was port fuel injection. This is before the era of direct fuel injection. Um, and this engine does have the infamous IMS bearing. However, if you are worried about that, I really wouldn't be because it's the latest and greatest version of that bearing that really has a very low failure rate. It feels a lot like if you've ever been in a 987 Boxster or Cayman of this era, uh, everything feels very similar. Uh, we got Sport Chrono package, so we've got the clock up top here. Um, and of course, we have this awesome Targa top, which for this drive, I'm going to be putting back. So the way you do that is there's this little toggle switch right here, and there are two, two toggles each way. So a soft touch will pull back this sunshade, and a firm pull back will pull the glass roof down and then slide it back under the hatch. Um, it's a very big piece of glass. I'm wondering if this is gonna feel anything like driving a cabriolet. And right now, it kinda just feels like you got a really big sunroof, a borderline cabriolet. So this Targa is not like the classic air-cooled Targas, um, barring the 993 generation, which had a similar sort of roof. Uh, the old Targas had a lift-out roof that you would store in your garage or in your frunk or your trunk if you had a 914. Um, but this is a glass roof with a much easier... Um, it's much easier to use than a earlier tar Targa top. Had a little bit of time to drive this car over to this location. So I already know that it's a, it's a nice cruiser. This one has the sport suspension so it is a bit firmer than your average 911 Targa 4 would be from this era. Um, the clutch is very easy. Uh, in fact, this clutch seems easier than in my, my own 987, uh, one of the easier clutches I've used recently. If any of you have been paying attention to the podcast, I recently hit a deer and totaled my Mark 7 VW Golf, and now I'm in a 2015 Mazda 3, which I love, but the clutch pedal is just so, so tough to get used to for some reason. I hop in this thing and it is just perfect. It's easy to pull off nice, easy shifts. This car also has the factory short shift kit, which makes the, I'm going to roll these windows up actually. Uh, I know you should have the windows down in a car like the Targa, but just so that the microphone picks up what I'm trying to say better. Uh, but yes, this car has a short shift kit, which does indeed have a slightly notchier and shorter shift than in a car that does not have the short shifter. Um, but it's not too notchy. This is the sort of short shifter I can get behind. I'm usually not a fan uh, because they get a little bit too notchy. Now, what you might actually notice uh, in the video right now is that there is quite a bit of wind noise and it's localized above my head, which is a really odd feeling. Um, unless I guess you have big sunroofs in some of your other cars. Heel toe downshifting, super easy with these cars. Yep. 3.6 has nice torque. I'm up to about a thousand uh, or 4,000 RPMs there. No, I'm gonna put the roof back so that I can hear what the car is doing a little bit better. With that, I'll also turn on the AC. Very comfortable car. So shift in the third, that's, yeah, definitely a shorter shift. Yes, that, uh, that is a nice shift lever. Very nice shift lever. Well balanced with the clutch pedal. 
Um, stock OEM setup, even though it is a short shifter, it's factory, it feels great. It has that feeling that Porsches have um, of just being all of one piece. I'm gonna get back into fourth gear here. The engine being so far back, um, you can hear it pretty well, but it's it's odd because it's not a mid-engine car where it's just right behind you and it's not a front-engine car where it's right in front of you. It's way back there. Now, I'm going to slow down a little bit, actually, so I can shift down to second gear. Uh, I don't think I've ever driven, at least not on a one-mile review, a base 911 like a Targa 4. Oh, yeah. Really nice shifting. Easy to heel toe. You know, there's a reason why 997s are considered the great sports cars that they are. It's because the hydraulic steering went electric after this generation. The hydraulic steering just, you feel the texture in the road and it's firm as well and quick enough to, to, for spirited driving and things like autocross. Uh, this sport suspension is actually very well balanced. It definitely feels like maybe something aftermarket is, was going on here. If, if somebody hadn't told me that there was the factory sport suspension in here, if the owner hadn't told me that, I probably would have thought, wait a second, has somebody upgraded the shocks or have they upgraded the springs or, or something like that? But what we get here is actually a really balanced, um, nice suspension setup that's stiffer than stock yet forgiving enough to be a nice cruiser. Now, those who know Porsche know that when you have four after the name of the model, such as this car, 911 Targa 4, that means it's all-wheel drive. And uh, so this all-wheel drive Targa can give you all-wheel drive traction for when you are driving in the winter, which, you know, I guess you could. That's what a Targa is for, right? You get that hard top, uh, more comfort, less wind noise, um, yet at the same time, uh, you can put it down, almost feel like you're in a cabriolet, and because it's all-wheel drive, you can put snow tires on it and it'll do just fine, just like any other all-wheel drive 911. Now. I will note, as I said, the engine feels pretty far back there. Yeah, it's definitely not a very loud engine. It's a pretty quiet car, actually. A little bit more quiet than I was expecting. Um, but chalk that up to engine placement. You just can't hear the engine because it's further away from you. Um, this steering wheel, it has a leather wrap on it. I don't believe this is a stock. I believe this is just to protect the wheel under it, this very nice cocoa uh, leather. And um, the seats, these are also the adjustable sport seats. They have very nice bolstering. Um, I am a pretty average side, maybe borderline slender guy, and they hold me in very well. They seem uh, like, I wouldn't call it tight, but definitely sit in these seats before you get them. Um, if they're adaptive, there should be probably some way to screw with the, uh, and change the different settings maybe on the bolsters. But uh, yeah, definitely sit in these seats um, before you commit to them in a car like this. So the throttle, nice and quick. And because it's 3.6 liters, it has the torque to pull you through. Now, right here, you have a little bit of room on the road, so I'm gonna give it a couple jiggles at the wheel. Yeah, you can definitely tell that this isn't front engine. And I wanna say that you can tell even just through how the car moves at its rear engine. That being said, the all-wheel drive system does add weight to the front axle, and this 997 does not feel quite as sharp when you tip into the steering as other 997s that I've driven. Uh, but it's by no means 
bad and I could still feel back there in one of those gentle curves that the car will respond to getting on the throttle and off and it'll throttle steer for you uh, if you plan your corner out right. Now I believe we're getting really close to our end point here. We are in Indiana, so the roads around where we are uh, near ish, about an hour out of Chicago, uh, they're not very twisty, um, but they are picturesque. So I hope you enjoyed that drive. Um, I just hit the brakes a little bit harder and uh, uh, downshifted right there. And it was a very nice brake pedal. It's actually quite soft. It picks up near the top softly but it stiffens up and feels very nice when you uh, dip into the brakes a little bit harder to slow yourself down from a higher rate of speed or more quickly than if you were just puttering around town. All right, so 997 Targa 4, a pre-facelift model. That would be, as I said, 2005. The 2008 is when the 997.1 was produced. This is the last of the dot ones. Um, it's an extremely refined car. The M97 engine, um, I've always felt, uh, at least in previous experiences, I've always felt that it has maybe a rougher edge than the later engines, the 9A1s that come into the 997.2 cars, like the one we're gonna drive later. Um, <clears throat> but honestly, this engine felt sewing machine smooth. It did not have a rough edge. Uh, it revved up smoothly, it was super quiet, um, and uh, yeah, it didn't intrude into the cabin quite as much as I've experienced in other cars from this era. Um, but anyways, on to our ratings. So we have four ratings. First one is Car Show. Uh, we've already reviewed a Nordic Gold Metallic 997, although that was a 2009 model, and it wasn't a Targa. Um, I honestly don't remember offhand what I gave that car, but I know it was pretty high. Um, a 997.1 Targa in Nordic Gold is not a car you're going to be finding all that often. This is a pretty rare car, especially in this color combination. And people, I feel people tended to go with the S model more than they did the base model in this era, which they certainly did for the 2012 model, which we'll talk about later. Um, you won't see a base 911 Targa 4 all that much, especially in Nordic Gold. I don't think people are gonna to care too much whether you have a base model or an S model or whatever model of Targa that you wanna feel proud about. I think people will be drawn to the color and the fact that it has leather everywhere and it's a very high spec car. Um, so I'm gonna give this, um, I'm gonna give this an eight and a half. Um, and that has a lot to do with the Nordic Gold color. Um, so the next would be Daily Driver. Now, this car could be a very good daily driver, as I covered earlier, because it has all-wheel drive um, and it, it's comfortable. We've got comfortable seats, um, driving it, you know, the act of shifting with the clutch pedal and the, the, the gear selector is very easy and forgiving. Um, you can pull away the first time uh, and I would be surprised if anyone stalled it. And the steering is just so nice and the car communicates everything you would want a car to communicate to you. It might not do as well at daily driving if you are not a fan of stiffer suspension. Uh, you'll probably think, wait a second, is this aftermarket or not? Handles great, may not be the most absolutely comfortable thing to daily drive. Um, I'm gonna give this car a 7.75 for daily driving because you could do that. Um, you'd be comfortable in it, but it might get slightly better if it had a slightly softer suspension. Um, I'm not gonna ding the Targa uh, roof for being not daily drivable. Um, it's one of those things that if it broke, it would be really expensive, but to be quite honest, if it broke, and especially if it broke um, when it was closed, you're not gonna be in all that much trouble. And you know, maybe if it's raining or snowing, don't pull the roof back, or if it's expected to, you know, uh, just in case something like that happens. I don't know what the failure rate of these roofs are, but um, you know, it can't be cheap to fix. But um, you know, I'm not gonna factor that in. So 7.75 for daily driving. Um, for road tripping, this car will do a bit better, uh, partly because the types of roads that you'll be driving on a road trip tend to be smoother, unless you, you hit a very bad stretch of highway. Um, and having this roof 
for a road trip would be definitely one of the highlights of driving a 997 generation Porsche 911. So for road trips, I'm going to give this car, I'm going to give this an 8.5. 8.25 or 8.5. Um, I'm going to give it an 8.5 because you could really d daily drive this thing pretty well. Um, now, fun factor. Uh, the type of roads that we're driving here right now are not the twistiest, most fun roads. Um, but this is what we could do with what we have in this area. Um, so maybe there's some point I drive a car like this again and I revisit uh, to get the full picture. But from what I've driven so far, I would probably give this car, I'm gonna give this a seven and a half for fun factor. Um, it's a fun car to drive. Engine's a little bit quiet, so if you're on a back road, uh, maybe make sure you put the, uh, the windows down and, uh, and the roof down, or the window back, I should say, the Targa roof back, uh, so you can hear that engine, but it's a little bit quiet. I do love the fact that it has a six-speed manual transmission, so that scores it some, some points there. Um, and come on, it's a 911, you know, uh, especially if you took this thing in the snow with some snow tires. Oh my God, you would have such a good time, I'm sure. Um, but all in, um, this is the kind of car, fun factor wise, that you'd probably take on a Sunday drive. This is not the sort of car that I would explicitly go, that's the car I want to take to my, fa my favorite back road. So therefore, I don't think that it can score quite as high as maybe a different 997 Carrera 4 or 4S would, or another model of 997. Uh, so 7.5 for this one. Now, at this point, it is just about time to hop into the 2012 997.2 Targa 4 and find out what's different about it, how it drives different, and what its ratings will be. All right, now we are in the 2012 911 Targa 4. So this would be the... 997.2 generation Targa 4, which means that this is the facelifted version, which it actually got more than a facelift. In addition to having different front end, rear end, you know, the headlights, taillights, fog lights, and little details like that, the, the biggest change with this car is that, well, two big changes. One, it received a direct fuel injection engine that also did not have an intermediate shaft. So therefore it can't have an IMS bearing or intermediate shaft bearing to fail on you. So this car has no intermediate shaft or inter intermediate shaft bearings. Those issues are gone. Of course, I'm sure a 997.2 is gonna have its own peculiar issues, um, but the IMS won't be one of them. So no bearing needs to be replaced. Um, a couple key differences between uh, the engines, uh, other than one being port injected, the other direct fuel is the M97 and the older car is an open deck uh, engine, which means that the coolant passages are all around the cylinders. If you took the cylinder heads off, you would see that there are these great valleys and you know places for, for coolant to go. Um, these later engines are closed decked, so it's completely solid and no coolant gets through that engine like it did in the M97. Uh, these cars also had better uh, oiling systems apparently, and I believe they had more than one pickup, whereas the M97, uh, such as my own Cayman or the old Targa we drove, is uh, there's one oil pickup, it can starve under hard cornering if you take it to the track, etc., etc. These DFI engines, these 9A1s, are objectively much better engines uh, that should give you much few, uh, fewer problems. Um, with that being said, uh, this 2012 model is actually quite sparse compared to the 2008 model. It doesn't have nearly as many options. Uh, it has Bose, for example. Um, it has the PDK transmission. Uh, that's the other big change with these cars is that PDK uh, or dual clutch automatic transmissions became a thing and you could order one from Porsche for an extra fee. Um, now the 997.2 Targa for like this car, instead of having one lever that has soft and hard levels to either uh, roll back the shade or slide the roof back or vice versa, this has two separate buttons. One, the front one is for that shade, which is right here. 
put that back for a second. And then the other one is for the roof, which I'll put back right now. Now it's very possible I'll put that roof back to where it was as we get moving because it's a little bit loud, but you know, for right now, let's just take off. So PDK being PDK, it acts very much like an automatic transmission. Um, Porsche really got the tuning right. When I drove a 2009 PDK car, which happened to be a Nordic Gold uh, Carrera S, actually, PDK still felt modern, but compared to Porsche's latest PDK transmissions, it felt old. So I'm sure compared to a lot of the competition, um, it feels great. You know, uh, it's really tough to get dual clutch tuning down right. Porsche got it right. Let's see if that's the same experience here. Yeah, feels like a regular automatic transmission like that. Getting a lot of wind noise up there with that Targa roof. In fact, I'm gonna put that roof back just because of that. Then I'm gonna put it into manual mode shortly after that. Now these are the uh, not the paddles, or the sport design steering wheel with paddles. This has the infamous buttons. So if you want to downshift, you push down. Oh, wait a second. Ah, uh, there we go. It is how I like it. So to downshift, you push. Either side, you pull, I should say. You pull back on these paddles. If you want to upshift, you're pushing that button. A lot of people don't like that. For me, it's not too bad because you always know that you pull back, it's going to downshift. You push in, it's going to upshift no matter which way the wheel is. Now, I'm going to downshift a few gears here, fourth, third. Seems to have a similar power uh, from behind the seat as the 2008 model. 2008 had 325 horsepower, this one has 345. And whereas the old car had 273 pound-feet, this one has 287, 280 something. Now I'm gonna go into second gear real quick here. Yeah, still fairly quick. PDK does not shift as quickly as it does today. Um, that is just a fact. And of course, this one doesn't have uh, Sport Chrono and you know the, the different drive mode settings, so perhaps it would get a little faster if you had that. This one doesn't. It's how it is. Uh, still feels modern, but definitely not as fast as the new cars. Um, on a twisty road, I wish I could speak to this a little bit better. It wasn't too bad in the um, other car I drove a while back, uh, but here we don't have those twisty roads, so we have to get our kicks here. Now, the engine's note, I want to say, does sound slightly different from that N97. It's hard to put a finger on. Yeah, I want to say it's a more refined note. So what I was saying about the uh, M97 feeling less refined um, than the 981s, but that this 2008 model I just drove felt more refined than I remember. That is true, but it still has a little bit of an edge in the way it sounds and feels compared to, to this engine. Um, this flat six feels a little bit more modern just for how the way it feels when it revs. A little bit more of a fine-tuned uh, sound and feeling from behind the wheel. I'm gonna slap that into the manual mode. So yeah, I also will say, when you have an interior that is optioned out the gills with leather, with different colors, um, it really makes a difference in how the car feels. This car actually, this fairly basic uh, 2012 model feels fairly basic because it was did not have a lot of options. 
Um, yes, the seats are leather, but you know everything you look at just seems to have a slightly lower quality. Maybe it's the color because it's just a gray color. It makes it feel a little bit, I don't know if lower quality, um, but maybe in my, my mind, you know, this flat gray reminds me of, I don't know, the, the color that you would find in just any old Korean or American or Japanese rental um, where interior color really didn't matter. Um, not a bad color, but just very plain. Uh, it is very comfortable. Um, I think that knowing that the other car had that aluminum look, including on the armrests, um, I probably wouldn't do that. Those armrests had this odd vinyl, you know, sitting at a diner sort of seat, you know. Uh, when I say that, you know, if you spill food on a diner seat, you can just wipe it right off. Um, it was that sort of material, and I do like this leather, it feels like. I don't think it's vinyl, I could be wrong, but this leather feeling uh, material over what the aluminum look option gave the other car. So these are not the adaptive uh, sport seats. These are the basic ones. Uh, they feel great. Uh, they're not quite as comfortable, actually, and I feel like you sit a little bit higher out the backrest um, or, or maybe it's just because the the bolsters don't stick out quite as far um, you feel like you're sitting more on top of the seat you know and uh, rather than in the seat so since again we have no curves I'm gonna give this one a little bit of a cur curve right here yeah third gear feels great slow down there a little bit yeah this car is uh quite nice yep and that was uh in automatic it shifts down very well it looks like yeah maybe not quite as fast as the new cars We are getting up to our turnaround point. So I'm gonna put this thing into manual mode. Yeah, for some reason the brakes don't feel quite as good on this car. And uh, you know what? PDK has come a long way. When I downshifted right there, I probably left them a little bit too, too last minute. Um, to allow, then uh, I left them a little bit too last minute that didn't allow the car or the transmission to catch up with the rate that I was shifting. So definitely PDK has come a long way since uh, 2012, the, the year this car is. All right, so yeah, a couple general thoughts beforehand. Uh, when you option the interior up, it really does feel like you can feel where you spent the money every time you get behind the wheel if you have one of those high option cars and you know a 997 is no different if you option the interior up it's going to feel a lot nicer it's going to feel like you got your money's worth if you don't it's going to feel a little more plain which is no bad thing um but definitely um just a little more austere something i didn't touch on actually is that I like the look and the layout of the infotainment system, the temperature and all those things more than I do in the 997.1. Um, that was a little bit crazy. It had a cell phone, what looked like cell phone numbers, dial numbers, and um, maybe it's because that orange for the center console was a little bright and a little bit just glossy glitter, glittery for me, and I'd rather just have this flat black sort of infotainment system um, and the buttons it just everything about this car feels slightly newer as it should that's what a mid-cycle facelift is uh, but now on to our ratings so car show uh, dark blue metallic not the most crazy color you can uh, option onto a car but it wasn't common uh, I happen to love blue cars so this is right up my alley I tend to like lighter blue uh, a little bit lighter than what this is but hey um, I'm not going to be picky with this. If a car like this showed up and it was this color and some other non-blue color, I'd definitely be going with this one. Uh, all things all things else considered the same. Um, that interior, 
nothing special about it. Um, yeah, this is not going to score quite as high as that Nordic Gold car. I'm going to give this a seven and a half when it comes to car show. Um, I believe it was eight and a half that I gave the Nordic Gold car, and I think a full point down from that Nordic Gold car is fair. Uh, for daily driving, um, I gave the Nordic Gold car 7.75. This is going to be a bit higher. Uh, and that's because of the PDK and transmission and because the suspension, which I also didn't touch base on, is um, much softer than in the Nordic Gold car. Now, the suspension on this one, I think the reason I didn't mention it is because I didn't notice it. Uh, I meant to compare this car uh, and its suspension to the other one, but it didn't cross my mind because there's nothing there to remind me about the suspension. And that just tells me that the ride and... Uh, uh, of this car is just much better. Everything else here uh, doesn't look like we have the heated seats like, you know, we do, we have heated seats, so in a cold climate, this would be good. Man, this would be a nice car to drive in, once again, because of the all-wheel drive system, especially if you put on snow tires, you could really use this year round. Um, I'm gonna give this an 8.25 for daily driving. Now, for road trip, it'll get even better. Um, eight and a half is what I gave to the Nordic Gold car, this will get a little bit better than that uh, for the same reasons that it got better at the daily drive. Uh, 8.75. Transmission just allows you to shift and uh, shift if you would like, uh, but leave an automatic if you don't uh, don't want to. Um, you can just really enjoy driving this, this car, and especially if you have a passenger. Um, it's just a really nice interior and you don't have to think about the drive quite as much. You can enjoy the scenery that you encounter on a road trip. So 8.75 there. Now, fun factor for this car didn't really drive with me quite as much as the previous car, the uh, Nordic Gold car. And part of that might actually have to do with the suspension, but also the PDK transmission. Um, and it's not because it's not a manual transmission, it's because PDK isn't what it is. This PDK isn't what it is today. This is a little bit more sluggish. It's not going to want to downshift as quickly. Let's say on a back road, as if you're coming up to a hairpin turn, you're going to have to plan your downshifts uh, out a little bit better uh, than what I did at the end of this drive. Um, so therefore, some of the advantages of having PDK are lost uh, because you know, when I click this paddle, especially in today's day and age, I expect a downshift to happen like that. And it do doesn't quite do it like that in 2012. It takes its time a little bit more. Um, the suspension doesn't feel like it would be quite as capable or fun on a back road. But again, I'm not going to make that judgment because I've driven plenty of cars that are softer, that are more fun than their stiffer counterparts. So not going to go down that route, but I'm pretty certain that I'd have a little bit more fun on a back road in that Nordic Gold car. And that's, again, seats, the sport suspension, manual transmission, short shifter. It's just the driver's car. This is more like the commuter's car who might happen to like having an open top. So we'll give this a seven for fun factor. Now remember, seven and a half is what I gave the uh, Nordic Gold car, so seven for this one. Now, that's my drive. I really enjoyed both cars. Um, thank you for the owner for inviting me out to Indiana to drive both of these cars. And we also have a couple more that he has in his collection that we're gonna be driving later today and tomorrow. So uh, this is turning out to be a pretty fun week for me. Um, if you wanna see those videos, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a video. And feel free to like this video if you liked it and comment if I got something wrong, if you have an opinion to add, or you just want to say hi. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time.